Hello. For today's set review, we are going a little bit back in time. This is not a brand new set. This is the Lego Movie 2 Rex Celsius, set 70839. And it is the only other sort of large flagship set from the Lego Movie. The other one, of course, being the excellent Welcome to Apocalypse that Danny had reviewed for us a little while back. Uh, so, start off just getting the formalities out of the way. It is 1,826 pieces, retails for, I think, at, not at right now, only like $159.99. So, not terribly bad value for money. Um, you get a mix of assorted figures. This is nano scale. So, think of it in the same vein as either the uh, Hogwarts Castle, or if you want to go real back. Uh, far in time, you can also reference the telecarrier as well. So you get five of the little baby dinos, all colored. You get, uh, of course, Rex Danger Vest with a uh, fairly standard head. And you get probably my favorite Emmett so far with the, did you dress double dots in your face? No, face. <laughs> and then the gruff, I did totally draw double dots on my face face. So it is quite delightful. And then just to top it all off, because again, this is a nano scale, you get two nano scale versions of the figures there. And again, uh, very well printed and designed for such tiny little, essentially what amounts to accessories. So you get a nice little mix of figures with the set, but the set itself is kind of the main attraction. So walking through some of the finer points of the set, I'm actually going to start with a little bit of an anecdote. When I was a kid, one of my favorite toys was something made by um, well, Galoo, but now Hasbro, Micro Machines. And this thing reminded me of a playset called Super Van City, where it looked like a minivan, and then you opened it up and it was a big playset unfolded and you can drive your little cars around. So in a lot of ways, this reminds me of that. Is that necessarily a good thing though? Well, you be the judge. So one thing I do want to get right off the bat, the box, which I'll just show you briefly here. I'll put this off to the side. The box does show a child, or in this case, a young adult, being able to stick their fist in it and fire little flick missiles or the, um, not the flip missiles, the stud shooters, whatever you want to call them. Uh, that's not really the case. So to get this out of the way, the mechanism for actually firing your missiles is right back here. And you'll see you can't actually stick your hand through it all the way. What you get is a molded handhold back here and a relatively simple and admittedly quite smooth and elegant trigger mechanism that is nothing more than a series of technic beams connected to a pivot point and some additional technic beams and just held in place with a couple of rubber bands again for lego this is very straightforward and it works very well it doesn't bind it's a very smooth pull so while you can one hand it it's a bit front heavy so you kind of just do this to load it they have you build out this sort of six round stripper clip and they just put the little missiles there and it basically slides in place right in the front. This is actually kind of a weak design um, as I will now demonstrate. Yeah. So you do have six shots ideally and the idea is, as you can see, it's going to drop down. But you get to about here and it's not firing. And because the friction of the bricks kind of prevents it from going down all the way. So you have to sort of feed it and then it just binds up again until you get to the end and boom, there you go. Not the greatest play feature in the world, but hey, if you're 14 and up, then it's awesome, right? So I find that to be a bit of a mixed bag. But overall, it's a clever piece of design engineering and 
relatively effective for the most part, so I don't really have too many qualms about it. The rest of the set is sort of standard play uh, set fare. Comes with side panels that open up, and inside you'll see there's a command center for your raptors. Um, there is a very cool little feature in here with a Lego head inside of the uh, crystal ball. This is a printed piece, one of the few actually printed pieces that you get, sort of like a command center type hologram, which is kind of neat. You also get side panels on either side as well. This one here just opens up to reveal Odal Gymnasium. Uh, there's also a loading bay here for whatever. I think you can put Emmett's little spaceship house in there. And then on the other side, you have a similar panel that opens up much larger one this time. That holds the pool table from the movie and a bunch of other callbacks as well. So again, this is nanoscale. This is not really, at least in my opinion, um, the most accessible of play sets, but you can do it. And it's still enjoyable to be able to get that much detail out of uh, a fairly small scale. Again, as other sets like the Hogwarts Castle would show. There's also a command bridge up top here, which you can just pop off the top panels. Uh, one of the little features that I found to be quite funny was they actually managed to get a skate lamp up in there, which is kind of cool. It's a double half pipe. And of course, the bridge, which is also modeled here with this tiny bridge. You can pop off the roof. And there's your micro figures. And that was a little bit of a clever design feature as well. Now, I know I'm, I'm sounding not all that enthused about the set's features and stuff like that. Um, because truth be told, while it's a it's an all right play set, I will say a lot of the value just comes in the parts themselves. As you can see, you have a litany of outstanding earth blue pieces to choose from a lot of stuff that is not widely used in just about any other set and you get a lot of things you have these large aircraft tails for instance or these large ramp panels down below you even have relatively new pieces like these two-piece cones this is not in any other set in this color so that's very exciting for somebody who's looking to use it as a uh, part set. One interesting feature that I will call out though, um, that obviously you can't really see here because I built it according to the directions, I know, gasp of shock and horror, is that the ship is actually capable of being left-handed. The central core here, down the middle, is really just a bunch of Technic uh, girders, just kind of creating a box structure. And midway through the build, you basically create these side panels here that are handed. If you were just to mirror build them, they just mount on the sides of this box girder, and you could easily make it left-handed or right-handed. Everything else is completely symmetrical. So I thought that that was pretty interesting. The other thing, too, is that a lot of people, when they saw this set, had thoughts of wearing them basically like giant gauntlets. Um, there's certainly been some interest with people wanting to remock this as an infinity bomb, but I've seen people attempt that as well, which is pretty awesome. I will say right now that if you were to modify this set by removing a lot of the interior bits, yes, you could shove your hand in there and wear it, you know, like a gauntlet. So that being said, overall, my impressions are. I had more fun building this set than I thought that I would. Um, but something about it to me just makes it seem less than the sum of its parts. So that leads me to my usual, is it a builder, is it a keeper, is it a part? So is it a builder? Yes and no. As I mentioned, as a playset, its value can only go so far. If you are 12 and up, 14 and up, whatever the case may be, and you love the Lego Movie 2, 
and you love the Rex Celsius, then yeah, why not have it? And if you're an adult who just likes to build what you collect, then yeah, this is pretty cool for putting up on a shelf. It looks really rad and everything. Um, but that's about it. That being said, is this a parter? Oh, absolutely. As I mentioned before, the amount of earth blue that you get in this, as well as the lime green accents and a lot of the unique technic parts really do make this set pop. And the fact that you can get so many different pieces in colors that are not common really makes this great for just having a part set. And for 1800 pieces at the price point that it currently is, I would say is reasonable value for money. Certainly not in the same vein that say, you know, Star Wars is going to, you know, gouge you a little bit. And there I said it, um, in terms of price per piece. So I would say that just in terms of what you're actually getting for parts here, there's a lot to like. And you'll notice that too when you build it, just how many unique parts there are. Yes, I will get this out of the way. There are a lot of stickers. Everything you see here along the front and the side, those are all stickers. But they're actually not that bad. Uh, for the most part, I mean, they're bigger. Not a lot of tiny people, not a lot of tiny stickers. This is not in any way, shape, or form a um, speed champion set, so you're, you're okay there. And finally, is this a keeper? Is this really going to be a valuable set? <sighs> Possibly. This is one of those ones that I think a combination of low interest and relatively approachable price point will make this thing start to go up in value as as we currently see the Lego Movie 2 is is going away. As a theme that's being discontinued, the movie has passed us now. And again, the lack of interest has meant that there's a lack of availability of these sets. So would we see a set like this really start to appreciate once it goes away? Well, maybe slow going, but I do definitely feel that there is going to be a, an aftermarket for this particular set, especially just for parts alone. Uh, there is there's enough to like here that, as we've seen in similar contrast to the first Lego movie, uh, you look at sets like Benny Spaceship, 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 which has done exceedingly well. Again, same reason as this guy, have been super valuable now on the secondary market. And we've seen that happen with some of the other sets now as well. So, of course, I could be completely wrong, but I would say if you have the means to still pick one of these up while you can, and you just want to squirrel away for a while, or just part it out, yeah, I would say it might be worth your time to look at. But if you're looking for a play experience, or if you're looking for something that, unless you're going to heavily modify it, okay, you just built a big and expensive gun. So I hope you like it though. And uh, if you have any questions, hit me up. Also, uh, if you guys have any suggestions or really have something desirable that you want to see for the next review, let me know. Thank you very much for listening.